Well, Merry Christmas. You guys feeling Christmassy tonight? Still a little early, or are you guys in the, in the mood now? Yes, yeah? sweet, sweet, sweet. If you've got your Bibles, turn with me. You're going to go to uh, 1 John uh, chapter 3 tonight. 1 John chapter 3. This is going to be good. We're talking about love. We're talking about love tonight. And um, uh, yeah, you know, this is what I know about, about you, especially if, if you're a part of SRC, is that you really do love God um, and you really do try hard uh, to love people. How many of you, like, that's your, that's, that, like, that bears witness with you? Like, you really, really do love God and you, you try your darnest to love people. But sometimes, I mean, God... God is, is God, right? But come on, sometimes people are like people, right? Yeah, and so like, we, we, you know, we all, we all know that we are to love God and we, we, we try and, and, we, and we try to love, we try to love, love, pe- love people. How, how many of you, 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 you've been in environments, and about, maybe it was a church or maybe it was a business, maybe it was whatever, and like, and, and you, you, you were happy to be there. Like you love to be there and you like, you gave it everything. You gave it like a 120, per, how many of you are like 120% type people? Like when you show up, baby, you, like you show up. Or, okay, like two of you. All right, four, okay, good, s- seven, eight, nine. Um, uh, yeah, like you give it your best, and like you work hard, and you like you, you you arrive early, you arrive on time, and 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 you go, you go, and you go, you give, and you give, and you give. You go to you go to you go to church every single Sunday. You know, um, you you even tithe eleven percent. I mean, you like you're hardcore, right, right? Like 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 you show up, and, and like and then how many of you you've you've like whether it's a relationship or, or church or business or something, but like like you would just go after it, like you just. You know, you just show up and just give, like, hi, here's the guy, yeah, hi. But you felt like there was nothing kind of coming back at, uh, to reciprocate the, the love that you were, that you were giving. Like, you, okay, you don't have to raise your hand. But, like, you're, like, you're in a relationship, you're in this thing, and, like, you're giving, you're giving, you're, you know, and, and, and there's different kinds of people. You know, sometimes when you're giving and love doesn't come back, sometimes what you do is you just, you double down. Anybody here, you're a double down kind of, kind of, per, like, you're, 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 you're giving, you're giving, you're loving, you're loving, you're showing up, but it's like nothing's really coming back. So maybe you wonder, maybe it's not being noticed, right? And so, so you double down and you start giving more. You, you give more, you love more, you show up more. Your, your boss tells you a joke that is not funny at all. And you're like, ha, ah! You know it's bad. You know <laughs> when, you, when you're faking, when you have to fake a laugh, for, when you have to fake a hard laugh, you know, for, for, for your, your boss. You know, and, and, and if we're honest, sometimes, sometimes um, uh, we get stuck in these relationships or we get stuck in these partnerships. We get stuck in these, in these places where we're giving, we're giving, we're loving, we're loving. And, uh, and sometimes it just feels like nothing, nothing is, is, is coming back. And that, that's a problem um, when you believe that you are loved based on how you feel. And to be honest, if, if, if our understanding for what love is was kind of framed out by, by the world, then that's how you know if you're loved, is you know if you're really loved by how you feel. Like, do you feel loved? And man, that's also a problem if you take into consideration that every single boy and girl, that every single person that's born on this planet was created by God to receive love from God. Every human was created by God to receive love from God. But what happens if you don't know God? Or what happens if you don't know that God loves you? So if God has created you to receive love from him, but you're not receiving love from him, then where do you go to receive love? People. Now, what happens if you've got people that are not being loved by God and they are love starved, they are craving love, they are love hungry, and they are tap dancing for love, and they are performing for love, and everybody wants to be loved. What do you do when you got all these people and they all want the same thing, and that is to be loved, and they're not getting loved, and even on the outside, they're getting a little bit angry. Somebody love me, what the? 
the beam is your problem. I'm doing every freaking thing I can. Why won't you freaking love me? I'm lovable. <laughs> I'm lovable. And I don't feel love. Oh, this is this is this is this is what many people feel like. This is what many people that you work with feel like. This is what many people you know that you might live with feel like. This is what maybe somebody that you're married to feels like. This. Maybe this is how you feel tonight. It's like I just want to be loved, and meanwhile you're married to a person that just wants. To, and you're working for a person that just wants to be, and everybody just wants to be loved. We've got a problem, and it's a love problem, but the problem is not God, because Darren is yelling again. Why do you always have to yell? Sorry, sorry. Don't yell at me. I'm just doing my job. This is what I do. I'm a pastor. I yell, okay? I'm not yelling because I'm angry. I'm yelling because I'm passionate. Big difference. All right, good. Yeah, I'm a little angry. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not angry. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got this. We got, we got, I'm just cooling it down. I'm just, you know, but the, 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 the problem is, is that we were created to receive, to, to receive love, okay? And, and, and then what happens is that we end up trying to give love that we don't have. What, what, what do you call when you, when you give something and you don't have it, you go into debt. And all of a sudden, you're giving what you don't have, and you're giving what you don't have in hopes that you'll have it. So I sow into you with the intent that you'll sow back into me. And guess what? That's not love. It's not, no, in fact, you guys, that is actually the opposite of love. Why? Because what's the opposite of love? Hatred, wrong answer. <laughs> That's the wrong answer. Okay, what's the opposite of love? <laughs> the opposite of love is, is, is selfishness. So when we give, 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 so that you'll give, give, give back, that's not love. Why? Because there's strings attached. What makes the love of God different than manipulative selfishness? There's no strings attached. And the gift that we have at Christmas time is this reminder for our nation that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that God himself became flesh and dwelt among us. And this is a big deal. Why? Because God came from heaven, which is amazing, by the way. Yeah, how many of you, you have an amazing house? Like just the most amazing house. You got the kind of house where you just walk in and the lights turn on and the heat adjusts to you and the bathtub is already ready to go because it discerned what, from, the, from the Bluetooth signal that your car sent it and it has your bathtub ready to go with me. Is that just me? <laughs> Heaven is way better than that. that, that Jesus went... Oh my gosh, from Beverly Hills to the ghetto, that Jesus came from heaven to earth. Why? Because of the Father's love. What, what Christmas does is it reminds our nation that our God is not a tyrant dictator. He is a father. And anytime you read your Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we always have to read it through the lenses that God is a dad. He is a dad, and he's a daddy of nations. And he has a jealous love for nations. And he wants to love nations back to life. But the way he will love nations back, the way he will love the United States of America back to life. You see, a lot of people, I heard one, one man say that the love of God has failed America that the kindness of God has failed America, and now is coming the severity. 
Okay? So God's kindness failed, and now is coming the severity of God. Let me tell you something about God. God doesn't put on hats and take off hats. So God doesn't have a love hat and then a severity hat. He has a love and severity hat, and he wears them at the same time. Behold, the goodness and the severity of God. And what does that mean? God never stops loving. Why? Because God is, because love is not something that God does. <laughs> nope. Love is something that he is. God is love, and God loves you tonight. He loves you. He loves you. And think of the most evil, hideous antichrist. Think of, think of, think of the crazy uncle that comes over at, at, at you know, um, on, on Christmas Eve and, you know, and, and brings a Ouija board just to offend everybody at the table. He knows that you're all Christians, and, he, and he's like, let's talk to the dead, and he thinks he's funny. God even loves him. Anyone have a crazy uncle like that, or is that just me? Hey, my crazy uncle got saved. Hallelujah. He, he, used to cut, he, used to, he used to get so mad that he would cuss us all out. Not me because I was just a kid. But he'd cuss out all the adults at the table on, on Christmas. And on, because we were talking about Jesus or something, he would get so mad that he would, he would storm out of the room. But you know what? He was really, really mad at God. Why? Because he thought that God was really, really mad at him. Let me tell you something. The kindness of God has never failed America. You, it, it's true. America is at where she is at because she has never had a proper revelation of God as Father. Our prisons are, are full, okay? Our prisons are full because our prisoners do not have a revelation of God as Father. The GLBTQ uh, and all that, all that agenda and all, all that stuff, the, the whole gay movement, that is as popular as it is because the church does not have a revelation of God as Father. That every major issue within our country is an issue because we do not understand the revelation of God as Father, and fathers don't have a revelation of fatherhood. When you know that you do have a good, good daddy who loves you so much and believes in you, then it would be a tragedy to do something intentionally to break your daddy's heart. But if you don't believe that you have a good, good daddy, and you don't believe that anyone has any sort of expectations on you, when you don't have a vision, you will cast off restraint, and you will act like a fool. And what the fool needs to hear is that they do have a father who loves them deeply, that is not angry at them, and that God's grace is sufficient, and that they are loved, that you are loved. And, and I'll tell you one thing that should never come from a Christian's mouth. One statement that should never, ever come from a Christian's mouth is shame on you. Why should that never come from a Christian's mouth? Because that's the language of the devil. The devil is the accuser of the brethren that comes to bring accusation, that comes to say, shame on you. How do you know the voice of a good, good father? Because he'll say, shame off you. All shame off. Listen, I'll tell you what, shame makes for a lousy motivator. Yep, shame makes for a lousy motivator, but love makes for one of the best motivators. And I believe that we are about to see a revelation of the Father heart of God. And how do you know that this revelation has actually saturated the church? Because you're going to see good, good fathers in the church who don't just father their own natural sons and daughters, but they take on spiritual sons and spiritual daughters. And dads start taking responsibility for the sins of the sons. Dads start to stand in the gap as priests on behalf of, the, of their sons. The love of God will be restored in the church through men 
who take their role and stand in the gap and love their wives and love their children and, and begin to model something that's counter-contrasting. Love is not weak. Kindness is not weak. There is no weakness in the kindness of God. It is not the kindness of God has failed America. No, the church has failed America because somewhere along the lines, we forgot about the God who so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. So Christmas time is actually a time to repent. It's actually a time for us to remember, oh yeah, the God who loves the world, the God who stinking loves you, the God who loves this nation, the God who believed that you were worth dying for, that being beaten for, the God who stood in the gap and stands in the gap, not just for you who believe, but for those who do not yet believe. For he did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but so that through him and in him all might find life, all might find a father, all might find a savior, all might find a helper, all might find the spirit of Christ Jesus that will bring conviction of sin and lead people back into the awareness that they are radically and infinitely and undeservedly loved. Love me, love me, say that you love me. That's in your hymn books. If you turn to your uh, hymn books and page two, that's an old Wesley hymn. I, I, I was at, <laughs> I was at a, um, a chamber of, of commerce luncheon thing um, back when they had those. And we were, we were all together. And um, I was sitting across, I was a new pastor at the time. Which means that I was a fairly scared pastor at the time. I, like being a young pastor, you're always so worried that somebody's going to ask you a question. You don't, you don't have the answer. And so um, that was, maybe not every pastor, but that was always my thing. I was 27. I became a pastor. I was so worried that I was going to get exposed as an imposter or something. And someone's going to ask me a question. I'm not going to have the right, you know. And, and luckily that never happened. I always had the right answer to everything. So I was, I was at this, <laughs> I was at this chamber of commerce luncheon, and across the table was this this guy, and, and he, he he asked me what I did. I said I'm a pastor at Sierra Bible Center here in, here in town. He goes, I have a question for you, and I was like, All right, whoops, I gotta go. Let's look at the time, you know. So I got up and left. Um, but back to the sermon. No, he. Uh, He said, I have a question for you. And now instantly my heart started beating because it's like all the business people at the table uh, stopped talking to listen to what was about to go down. And this guy said to me, do you believe that humans are capable of loving or do you believe that humans have to be taught how to love? Started sweating my pants a little. And I said, um, I said, I believe that we are all created with a desire to be loved and a desire to love. But my faith says that our first parents, Adam and Eve, sinned against God and everything got fractured. And from that point forward, we were all born with our love tank fractured and messed up. And because of that, Love and humanity is messed up. And I believe that we as humans, we need to have our hearts healed so that we can actually have the capacity to receive love and then give it away. And until our hearts truly get healed, what we call love is just usually um, manipulation and trying to get our own needs met. And, And he goes, huh, good answer. It was, it was, it, that was amazing because I just basically shared the gospel and I looked at him and it was like he had a twinkle in his, he, he set me up. He did it on purpose. It, it, it was like, he's like, I'm going to throw you an underhand pitch so that you can hit a home run in front of the whole table. You know, that's what it was like. It was like, this guy was a believer and he's like, hey, Darren, I got to, I'm slow though. I didn't, I didn't really, I didn't really get it till, 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 till afterwards. And, um. Here in 1 John, everyone there, 1 John chapter 3, check it out. It says this, see what an incredible quality of love the Father has shown to us that we would be permitted 
to be named and called and counted children of God. And so we are. For this reason, the world does not know us because it does not know him. Here's what John, the beloved, is, uh, is saying here. See, behold, know this. Know this by seeing this. God loves you. How do you know this to be true? You know this to be true because you have been adopted, counted in, declared. The, 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 your identity card has changed. You are an insight. You are a child of God, not because you did something, but because Jesus did everything. When you believed in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, all of a sudden, in this place, in this place of declaration, there was a great um, declaration, even in the heavens, even in the courts of heavens, a declaration of your innocent because of your acknowledgement that Christ has taken your guilt. Isn't that incredible? It's incredible to think that in the heavens, it was declared, Darren Stott is innocent of all of his sins. The past, the present, the future, it is done. It is complete. Isn't that incredible? Isn't that incredible? You see, and Jesus didn't only die for my sins. And here's the other thing, that Jesus died for my sins even before I repented of them. Jesus forgave me even before I said, Jesus, will you forgive me? That when I repented, that wasn't for his sake. That was for my sake. That was me acknowledging my sin. That was me acknowledging, it was me bringing my will into alignment with with his will. And can I tell you something? My personal belief is that all humans are created in the image and likeness of God. I believe that we all have a spirit. I believe that many of us have contracted major amnesia and we need to be awakened to the identity that we are sons of God and I believe that we need to repent and that is that we wake up to the reality that we are living way below our standard of living that Jesus has done it all he has forgiven us it's time for us to forgive us it's time for us to do a u-turn turn away from wickedness turn into Christ Jesus but he has done it all he has done it all. Yeah. And you know what's so amazing about that? That in this place of knowing that I'm radically loved, you know what his love does? <laughs> his love actually comes and gives me the fuel to make the right choices, or as my wife calls, wise choices. When I realize, when I realize that I am the righteousness of Christ, I used to really, me- I, this really used to mess with me. I, I used to not believe it. I used to be the sinner guy. In fact, from this stage, well, Gail was my pastor. She would let me preach every now and then. I don't know why. Probably, you know, she, she would let me preach. And I would, from this stage, I'd be like, I'm a sinner, and so are you. You're a sinner. We're sinners. And the only re- I had this idea that, like, God just has to put up with me because of his son. But I'm, I'm practically scum. But spiritually, you know, I'm, I'm going to make it. Like, I just had this, you know, it, yeah, yeah. Because I, I, I swallowed the brown pill of Calvinism. You know what I'm saying? And I, no, no joke. I swallowed that thing hook, line, and seeker. And I believe it. You know what? When I, when I said that I was a sinner, you know, why, you know why I would say it? Because that resonated with me. Because I felt like a sinner. And when I believed that, that made my standard real low. Because what do sinners do? They sin. Hey, I sinned today. Of course I did. I'm a sinner, but don't worry. I saved by grace. Here's what would happen. I would get done preaching, and Greg Daly would come up to me, and he'd be like, hey, that was a real good word. I, Thanks, Greg. Yeah, real passionate, real passionate. Thanks, Greg. Yeah, you had, a, you had a lot of passion there. Thanks, man. Awesome. Yeah, you had some good points. Thanks, Greg. Yeah, you were, you were pretty funny. Thank you. Yeah, you know, but <laughs> you're not a sinner. Yeah, I, I am, Greg. I am. I'm a sinner. I, I know what I've done, and I know, I know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm a sinner. No, no, Darren, you're, you're not. You're not a sinner. 
No, Greg, I am a sinner. And I would, I would, wrestle, I would wrestle with this. Pastor Gail, she would get up here every single week, every single week, and she'd, she'd end her sermon the same way. You always knew it was coming. She'd say, you're so gorgeous, and you are loved. You're so loved. And I'd sit there saying, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, but. Some people just need a good beating, right? Like some people just need a good, some people just need a good kick in the butt, right? Like, come on, Gail, where are you going to hit on the other stuff? Where are you going to yell at us? And, and every single week, Gail would just get up and just be like, you are loved. I'll tell you what, one day I got, I got one of the coolest prophetic words. I probably have more prophetic words than everybody in this church combined. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Anyways, I'm just bragging. Um, I got words on cassette tape, on VHS, on DVD, CD, ROM. I got, I got them on jump drives. I got prophetic words coming out of the ears. And I, one time I was up, I, yeah, I'm just bragging. But I was up here in the front and Pastor Gill came up to me. And I was just in a rough, I was in a rough spot. And she came up to me and she gave me one of the most incredible prophetic words. And this is what she said. DJ Father just wants you to know that he loves you so much. He loves you so, so, so much. And he's so proud of you. You know why that was so powerful? Because I didn't, I didn't feel the love of God. And I didn't feel like Father God was proud of me. And I felt like I... I don't know. Certainly didn't feel it. But you know what? I needed to be reminded of my sonship. And I needed to be reminded that it really was love. I really needed to hear from somebody in the body of Christ what Father thought about me. I needed to hear it. I needed to hear truth. Why? Because I didn't believe it. I knew it. But I didn't believe it. And week after week, Sunday after Sunday, we heard the same thing as a body. You are gorgeous, you are beautiful, and you are loved. And I don't know when it finally sunk in. I can't take you to a day. I can't tell, take you to a day when I got delivered of a rejection demon. <laughs> Spitting green news everywhere. <laughs> Maybe you'll have that. I think that's awesome. I just didn't have that. For me, my, my healing, my healing took, it took time, man. It took a long time. But can I tell you, after hearing truth over and 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 over, just you really have to say that again. We know, Gail, we are loved and you think we're gorgeous. We know already. We are loved. Okay. Gosh. Can we move on? Can we move on? Do we get to move on? Do we get to new move on? No. Why? Because we forget. I forget. Still this day, I, I forget. I forget, I forget how loved I am. And I go into this place of needing to be loved. And so I just start giving more, giving more, trying harder, doing more, being more. In order to do what? In order to to get more. And this is where for every single one of us this Christmas, I want you just to hear it tonight. I want you to hear it. I want you to hear it again and again and again. So many times we sing, God, we love you. 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 But sometimes you just need to hear he loves us. Oh, he loves us. Sometimes we just need to, to, to hear that, that, that Jesus loves me. This I know for the Bible tells me so. Just declare, see it? This is what he says here. See, see what manner the love the Father has shown to us that we could be called children of God. We see it, and then what do we do? We believe it. And when does that happen? I don't know. Maybe you're already there. Maybe it's going to happen in the next three to six months. But until it finally seeks in from your head to your heart, you, don't, you just need to read. Scripture verses, you need to have people telling you all the time. We had a young man uh, in Teen Challenge come up to me today and just started apologizing. 
he's, and he was, he was, he was apologizing so much. Passion. Pastor Darren, I'm sorry, man. Pastor Darren, I'm so sorry. I failed you. I failed the church. I failed God. I went back into the world, man. I'm so sorry, Pastor Darren. I'm so sorry. I know I let you down. I know I let God down. I let my guys down. I went back into the world. Pastor Darren, I'm so sorry. I, I, I don't want to do it again. I don't want to be that guy. I know it's available. I, and I just, I just let him. I didn't interrupt him. I just let him keep going. And I just put my hand on his shoulder. And I just thought, I'm just going to let him go until he, until he stops. And then he finally stopped talking, and I just looked at him, and I said, you are a son of God, and he is proud of you. And he goes, really? That was the most powerful question I've been asked all day. Really? Really? God would love this. God would love this, really. We see it, we declare it, until we begin to believe it. And we just keep receiving, just keep receiving the love of God so that we as a church, that we as men, so that we as a body of Christ, that we can actually give something that we're in pro- in possession of. Sometimes there's, sometimes we're a little out, out of balance between what we're professing and what we're possessing. That's fine until somebody actually puts you to the test. And at that point, you actually find out what's in your bank account. Josh, would, would, would you come? Tonight we're going we're gonna to just declare, receive. Tonight we're actually going to receive of communion. This is incredible. Tonight we're going to go back to the night that Jesus was betrayed. Um, back to the night when Jesus took his body and he broke it and said, this is my body that was broken for you. When he took the cup and he said, this cup is my blood that is given for you. Why did he give his body for us? Because of love. Why did he shed his blood for us? Because of of love. Why did the Father send his son? Because of love. And why are there, as Bobby Connor says, not just evangelists and assassins? Do you, do you receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? I do. Good. And send you to heaven. The reason why we don't just have evangelists and assassins, the reason why he leaves us here on this earth is so that in our redemption and in our restoration, we can likewise take this incredible, glorious, scandalous, anti-religious message that he loves you and that on the cross, he took on all your jacked upness so that you could take on his perfection. All you who are completely messed up in the head, come to Jesus. All you who are totally crazy perverted, right? You can't even look at a Christmas tree with that. You know what I'm saying? Come to Jesus. All you with major anger issues, come to Jesus. All you who think you don't need Jesus because you got it all together, you got so much discipline, your self-righteousness stinks. You need Jesus. You say, but where was God when this horrible thing happened? Where, where, where was God? He was there. He loves you. He is here. Come to Jesus. Don't let your pride keep you from his love that he's pouring out for you. Uh, all you who are full of hatred, come to you hate everything. You hate your kids. You hate your parents. You hate your spouse. You hate your work. You hate your, you hate the earth. You just you, you you know you burn your trash just so your environmentalist neighbor can be triggered. Come, <laughs> just kidding. That's what I I, I was just yeah. Come to Jesus. You need Jesus. I need Jesus. We all need 
Jesus. God is love, and His love fills our hearts, and we get transformed by His love. And you accept Jesus, oh my goodness, it's like Jesus is the gateway drug because it's like you invite Jesus to come into your heart, and He doesn't come alone. You invite Jesus to come into His heart, in your heart, and all of a sudden, here comes the Spirit of Christ. You saw it. All of a sudden, now here's Jesus, and now here's the Holy Spirit, right? And you got the Holy Spirit convicting you of sin, and the Holy Spirit speaking to you, giving you words of knowledge, revelation, prophetic, all this stuff. So you got Jesus, and you got the Holy Spirit, and then Jesus is like, yeah, and then there's Dad. Dad's moving in too. So you get, you get the Son, you get the Spirit, right? You, you, you get the Father, and they, they all move in. And then all of a sudden, you get to find out you got this really big family called the Church of Jesus Christ. And they're in every nation, and they're in every generation. And even the dead ones aren't dead. They're in a cloud with their pom-poms cheering you on. And they love you more than you love you because they don't know you according to the flesh. They know you according to the Spirit. And so you've got the Father, the Son, the spirit, the great cloud of witnesses, great aunt Wanda who prayed for your salvation is up there saying, yeah, that's my great nephew. That's my great nephew. This thing is nuts. And it's fuel. It's made possible by love. We never get to move on from love. We never get to say, been there, done that. I had a revelation in 90 something. No, no, no. We need a revelation tonight. We need a big drink of his love tonight that Solomon would say, mm, 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 mm. your love is better than the most delicious vintage wine. Come and kiss me with the kisses of your mouth. You are loved. You are gorgeous. You are beautiful. You've been set apart. You've been redeemed. And before you've even done a thing, His light, it comes and fills you. And you begin to glow with the light of heaven. Merry Christmas. And may you be reminded of the Father who so loved the nations that He sent His Son, that whosoever, whosoever, whosoever would believe in Him would no longer perish, but would step into life. I met with a man today, and he said, I don't know if I'd be willing to die for Christ. I said, I don't think that's the question that God is asking you. He said, what do you think the question is? I said, I think the question is, are you willing to live for Him? The Father's not trying to kill you. That wouldn't be a very good father. He's trying to bring you life and life abundantly. And where do you find life? In his body and in his blood. Let's drink blood tonight. Would you stand? If you've never done this before, just peel back the first layer. We are told this is edible. I don't know if it's biodegradable, but it'll be all right, trust me. It's COVID communion, praise the Lord. And on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he was with his friends with the very one that would betray him. And on that night, Jesus took the bread and after giving thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that I give for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the bread together. great sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And in the same way, he took the wine. And this is get where it gets real crazy. He says, this wine 
is my blood. Take and drink in remembrance of me and do it often. Do it often for as often as you do, you are declaring and proclaiming a new covenant of love, a new covenant that guarantees my eventual, inevitable return. Take this cup, receive it into you, and celebrate this new covenant of grace and love. Let's partake of the cup together tonight. Let's give thanks to the Lord tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your peace, God. Thank you for salvation. Let's sing tonight. Thank you. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who
my soul's alive. I've been through some stuff, but it doesn't define me. No, his love defines me. What he says defines me. I am who my father says that I am. And I can do anything that he calls me to do. If I offend you, I'm sorry. I'm just really, 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 really. Don't get tired. Really, really, really. I said I'm just really, really, really. I said I'm just really, really, really. I said I am really. I said, I am like totally, really, really, really loved by my daddy. Yep, 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 yep. Let's make some noise tonight. Hallelujah, God. Woo! <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> yes! I just declare the love of God over you right now. I just declare a fresh infilling of the Father's love right now person in this room right now, even for people watching online, I just declare the great love of God. I declare a love. I declare a Father God love invasion wherever you're at. If you're going through brokenness, if you're going through grieving tonight, if you're going through depression tonight, I break every spirit that is not in alignment with the Holy Spirit. And I just pray for the waterfall of the Father's love just to invade your privacy right now. I just declare the Father's love right now that it would just, it would shatter every attack of the enemy even for people in this room you've been overwhelmed by spirits that are not in alignment with the love of God I issue an expiration date right now I say that as of December 5th 2021 those spirits no longer have a stronghold in your life I declare the love of the Father as your stronghold I declare the love of God as the only principality I declare the love of God as your rest refuge. I declare the love of God as your secret place. I declare from his love you will live, from his love you will love, and from his love you will go forth and expand and advance the kingdom of God, which is a kingdom of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And everybody said, everybody said, Listen, if you need prayer for anything, we want to pray for you. We have the most incredible team of mothers and fathers that will stand with you and pray with you tonight. So you don't have to leave. You can come up for prayer. If you are going to leave, you are loved. You are gorgeous. Go have a powerful week. God bless you. Love you guys. Hey, SRC, the...